Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you what happens when you heat up zinc oxide. So I have some zinc oxide powder here. This stuff is used all over the place. It's used in food, it's used in sunscreen because it absorbs UV light really well. So I'm going to put a blowtorch on it. Now watch what happens. It looks like it starts to burn. This isn't anything exciting. When you hold a blowtorch to most things, they change colors. But now watch what happens when I remove the heat. It actually turns back to white. So this thermal decomposition is actually reversible. So what's actually happening here is the zinc oxide is actually forming zinc ions and molecules of oxygen. But then when you remove the heat, the oxygen just reattaches and it forms the regular zinc oxide again. When the oxygen is lost from the crystal lattice and a zinc ion forms, a Frankel defect forms. A Frankel defect is when an ion moves in some part of the crystal lattice that it normally wouldn't be. So the zinc ions and the electrons move to these interstitial sites in the zinc oxide and this makes it able to absorb blue light a little bit better. And so the white zinc oxide now appears a little bit yellow. But what about if we don't let it have any oxygen? So I have a mini vacuum chamber here. The reason I'm choosing this really small one is so that I can quickly evacuate the air from it. So what I wanna do is I wanna heat this up so that it turns yellow, and then I'm gonna quickly put this top over and it should immediately suck the air out of it. And let's see if it turns back white or it stays yellow. Okay, turn on the vacuum. Okay, three, two, one. So I don't know, it looks like it's back to white again. There might be a little bit on the top there. Let's turn off the vacuum. See if it changes color a little bit. It looks like it stays yellow for a little bit longer, but not a huge difference. I think we're gonna have to find another way to heat this while it's already in the vacuum. So I'm just gonna use this stainless steel wire and see if it can act as a heating element. And I'll run a bunch of current through it and try to heat it up red hot and heat up the zinc oxide. Okay, let's pump it down. Okay, now I'm gonna turn on the heating element. Three, two, one. Okay, it's getting red hot in there. Okay, let's turn it off. Okay, it's yellow. See if it stays that way. So this is a little bit surprising. I thought we'd get a bigger difference between being in air and being in the vacuum, but it looks like no matter what, as soon as we remove the heat, it turns back white again. And it doesn't matter whether it's in a vacuum chamber or in the air. Now we can get some hints to why this is happening when we look at how much oxygen is actually coming off of the zinc oxide it's actually a very tiny amount of oxygen coming off of it. For example, when you heat zinc oxide at 800 degrees Celsius, you still have 99.993% of oxygen still on the zinc oxide. So only 0.007% of the oxygen is removed when you heat it up. So that means for a very noticeable color change, you're only losing a tiny bit of oxygen from it. Now we know that the vacuum chamber isn't actually a perfect vacuum, so there could still be some oxygen in there. But also remember there's still oxygen all around the zinc oxide as well. So basically it could just steal enough oxygen atoms from the rest of the zinc oxide to get it above that threshold so that it doesn't stay yellow like that. So no matter what, it's gonna turn back white when you remove the heat. What's interesting is that when you heat the zinc oxide up, it actually forms a non-stoichiometric substance. Now this seems a little bit weird. It means that if you break it down small enough, you can't get whole numbers of zinc and oxygen. They won't match up. 
And zinc oxide isn't unique in being non-stoichiometric. In fact, virtually any metal oxide is actually non-stoichiometric as well. For example, ferrous oxide isn't actually just one molecule of iron and another molecule of oxygen mixed together equally. You actually only have about 95% of the iron atoms you need to match the oxygen. Thermodynamically, you don't always get a whole number of atoms matching each other. There's always some Frankel defects in there that are getting the numbers to mismatch a little bit. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. Hope you learned something. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And also check out theactionlab.com if you haven't yet. I sell two science boxes there. One of them a vacuum chamber box and the other one is a self-pouring fluid box. And we're not gonna be ordering anymore, so if you haven't got yours yet, head there now. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.